The American military's ability to deploy its troops anywhere in the world on short notice is one of the many reasons that make it the most powerful army in the world. When talking about these grandiose missions, large cargo aircraft such as the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy or the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III typically come to mind. But apart from these larger-than-life planes, a secret fleet of small Swiss planes have also become fundamental for these dangerous operations. Their role is even more critical as the U.S. continues its fight against terrorism. The Swiss plane's name is the U-28, and since June 2019, it has an official nickname, Draco, the Latin word for dragon and a constellation in the far northern sky. Since their introduction almost 15 years ago, these modest planes have become an increasingly important component of U.S. counterterrorism operations with intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions all over the world. Although small, the roar of the Draco is mighty. Off the shelf. In October 2005, the Air Force's 319 Special Operations Squadron received a new aircraft. It was the small but mighty U-28A, a single-engine turboprop passenger and cargo aircraft. After flying its first mission in 2006, 4 U-28A became part of the 319th Squadron. As of 2020, the Air Force's U-28 fleet consisted of 28 aircraft in total. The U-28 is the military version of the Swiss-made Pleiades PC-12 and was initially purchased at a unit price of $3.5 million. The U in its designation stands for Utilitarian. The plane has been popular with commercial users from all over the world since 1991. The U-28 is a relatively cheap aircraft and runs for about $500 per flight hour. It carries up to nine passengers and cargo from a remote airstrip to another hub 1,500 miles away, flying well above terrain at a cruising speed of 310 miles per hour. The plane can successfully take off in 2,450 feet and land in 3,050. It is excellent at landing on dirt and grass strips, making it handy for Middle East missions. Since the beginning, the United States Special Operations Command and the Air Force Special Operations Command saw a lot of potential in the U-28. According to the Air Force Special Operations Command's Captain Kirsten K. Duncan, quote, These aircraft give us the flexibility to move smaller amounts of people and cargo to remote or austere airfields that our larger aircraft could not use. Secret Technology the exact intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities of the U-28 are classified. Not all of the 28 U-28 share the same configuration and payload, and different iterations of the aircraft have appeared throughout the years. Although quite similar to the airplane civilian version in terms of basic design, most of the U-28A models carry state-of-the-art equipment. Within the last decade, the Air Force Special Operations Command has upgraded several of their U-28s with a secretive new configuration known as EQ+. According to Pentagon budget documents, this update includes a sensor turret, electro-optical and high-definition infrared cameras, and intelligence systems capable of geolocating and monitoring hostile communications. This equipment also allows the aircraft to fly at higher altitudes. Most importantly, it enables it to operate at a further distance from its target, which reduces risks and makes it less likely to be spotted by the subject of interest. Despite being a relatively small aircraft, all U-28s have avant-garde communications and data-sharing software. This allows the crew to send intel they gather from their missions to their command centers in real time. Like other special ops aircraft, the U-28s keep such a low profile and appear so similar to their civilian version that they often go unnoticed during their clandestine missions. To maintain such camouflage, these planes tend to fly with civilian-style paint colors, rather than the standard Air Force Special Operations Command gray color scheme. Missions since the exact details about the missions completed over the years by the U-28 aren't public information, the internet is rife with speculation and theories. According to most of them, the U-28 is precisely what its U-prefix stands for, a utility aircraft. The U-28's extended list of capabilities, mixed with its low operating cost and discrete design, have made it ideal for small counterterrorism missions worldwide. Since its initial deployment in 2006, the U-28 has been essential in ISR, which stands for Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Missions. The mission's primary objective is to bring support in humanitarian, search and rescue, conventional and special operations missions, such as pursuing rebel pickups in deserted areas and eavesdropping on suspicious radio communications. An unofficial report has stated that the U-28 fleet had accumulated over 500,000 flight hours. This aircraft has completed successful missions all across the Middle East, Afghanistan and Africa, and is said to be operated from small airstrips in Uganda, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Djibouti and mostly Burkina Faso. Between 2011 and 2012, 
The 318th Squadron flew a series of sorties in the Philippines as part of Operation Enduring Freedom Philippines. In it, U.S. Special Operators worked with Filipino security agents in the battle against Abu Sayyaf, an Islamist terrorist group, as well as Jama Islamaya, a regional Islamist terrorist organization. Both groups have ties to Al-Qaeda, who have committed crimes against civilians, mostly foreigners, throughout the country. Departing from their bases in Germany, U-28 performed similar sorties across Europe and Africa. In these missions, the planes flew 133 sorties and moved just over 27,000 pounds of cargo. Most of these missions were to or from the Entebbe International Airport in Uganda. This was the American mission's hub helping African troops in four countries to eradicate the Lord's Resistance Army rebel group and a tireless effort to apprehend its infamous leader, Joseph Kony. For over 20 years, Kony and his organization had terrorized Central Africa, abducting hundreds of children to fight as child soldiers or child trafficking. The aircraft also flew sorties in Latin America from Sorocano Air Base in Honduras. Although it isn't clear what mission the aircraft supported in the region, the planes likely moved cargo and personnel around as part of both counter-drug and counter-terrorism operations. A terrible accident. Although the U-28 has completed dozens of successful sorties, not all crews have been as lucky. In 2017, it was reported that a U-28 aircraft sustained an accident near Clovis Municipal Airport in New Mexico. The pilot, co-pilot, and a combat systems officer were lost upon impact. The crash, which happened on March 14th, occurred during a training sortie. A thorough investigation concluded that the crew lost control of the aircraft when it entered a stall at low altitude during an emergency landing procedure. There were no indications of a significant mechanical malfunction. The investigation also inferred that the crew delayed the actions that were necessary to prevent the accident. Lost in the tragedy were pilot Captain Andrew Becker, combat systems officer Captain Kenneth Dalga, and co-pilot First Lieutenant Frederick Deliker. Everybody loves Draco. After more than a decade of completed missions, the U-28 finally received an official nickname. In June 2019, the Air Force Special Operations Command publicly announced that the aircraft would be known as Draco. In Latin, the word Draco means dragon. It is also a large constellation in the far northern sky. Not long after the official announcement, many Air Force officials commented on how much they and the Special Ops team treasure the Draco. Colonel Andrew Jett, 492nd Special Operations Wing Commander and former Draco pilot, commented, quote, Our partners may not have known the personal names of the crew members, but they always know Draco. There's a tremendous amount of recognition and respect when a crew member identifies him or herself as being a member of Draco. I'm thrilled about the exceptional reputation Draco has built over the 13-plus years of the program, and it's now codified as the permanent aircraft name and is something every member of Draco, past and present, can take pride in. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Chad Anthony, commander of the 319th Special Ops Squadron, said in a statement that, quote, The Draco has come to mean unparalleled special operations intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance support, especially to the men and women on the ground in the line of fire. Aircrew and special operators who have flown and worked with the Pilatus U-28A have known it as Draco since its first combat deployment in June 2006. Air Force Colonel Robert Mesitis said that he was happy the U-28 had gotten an official nickname because the plane deserved it. He stated, quote, I'm glad to see we're bringing this initiative to fruition after all this time, as the U-28 has become so much more than the single-engine, nondescript utility aircraft we brought into the service over a decade ago. The Air Force declared that the plane's new nickname had been approved in May 2019, but plans to officially name it date back to as far as 2010. In the line of fire. The United States isn't the only country with a small plane dedicated to conducting long-range intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance special operations. Other countries such as Finland, Switzerland, and Bulgaria have their own variant of the Pilatus PC-12, which conducts similar missions. The Draco has proven itself to be worthy of such a long history in U.S. military service. It has excellent performance, and it's a very adaptable plane. On top of everything, it's also cheap to maintain and is very discreet. It comes as no surprise that the aircraft has been used for over a decade. There's no doubt that the newly christened Draco will keep watch and perform hundreds more special ops missions worldwide for years to come.